Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross with electricbikereport.com and I'm here with Sphinx, Director of Brand and Product Development for Quiet Cat E-Bikes and we've got their flagship Jeep full suspension electric mountain bike. Sphinx, what is this bike? Who is it for? You know, <clears throat> the Jeep bike is really for the person that wants to get out and explore the great outdoors and wants the most capable mountain bike ever created. We partner with Jeep developed this really kind of in secret alongside the new Wrangler 4xE to really tell that electric off-road story. The torque, the power, the quiet, the utility that you get out of a quiet cat bike is all found right here in the Jeep e-bike. It's the perfect thing when the road ends, the adventure continues. Very cool. And so what are you getting with this bike? What is this bike spec with? So it's going to be spec with our highest end component package. So first thing you're going to find is a uh, 1500 watt peak motor. Now this comes in both the classified 750 watt version, it also comes in our unclassified 1000 watt version. But the key is there is you're getting the maximum power out of an electric bicycle, the maximum amount of torque so that you can bring your adventure with you. We're gonna pair that with of course the fat tires for a variety of different terrain, anything from sand and snow to hard pack rocks like the slick rock out in Moab. You've got a nine speed wide range gear set little bit less is more here. We don't need the incremental steps on a new 12 speed or 11 speed drivetrain, but you still have the range going from 11 to 42, climbing up the steepest hills you need. And then of course, reaching that top speed when it's just time to get back. Um, the other thing that you're going to see is a true four bar linkage paired with a RockShox damper. This is not a toy. This is the real deal. 150 millimeters of suspension travel in the rear. And we pair that with 150 millimeters of travel out of the inverted fork inspired by a motorcycle. It's extra stiff for the weight of the bike to be able to handle that super aggressive terrain. Keeping all the confidence in line, four piston hydraulic brakes from our good friends over at Tektro TRP. That'll help you keep everything in control. And of course, CST tires to make sure the rubber stays to the ground. Very cool. And we just finished our test ride of this bike. And boy, does that fork make a big difference. It, it, it tracks true, tracks straight, handles the rough very, very well. It's an impressive, impressive piece of engineering there. It really is. What we found is that with our utility electric bikes, the bike is a little bit heavier. It's obviously much lighter than a motorcycle, but it's going to be a lot heavier than your carbon enduro bikes of today. So the inverted fork is so much stiffer to be able to handle that weight so that you know that when you're handling that really aggressive terrain, the fork is doing the suspension and you're not worried about bending or breaking components. So where does the Jeep e-bike fit into the greater electric mountain bike ecosystem? Because it is a very large, very powerful, very heavy bike. So where does it fit in? What's its use case? Sure. So at Quiet Cat, our bikes are built for utility. So we're built to take the adventure with you. We're built to go further, do more, explore more. Um, with our paradigm shift that we've had worldwide over the last year and a half or so, the first mile of adventure is as crowded as it's ever been. So what the Jeep e-bike allows someone to do is take their adventure with them and go so much further than everyone else. The ride is always a great time, but being able to have the utility with our bags, our trailers, our racks to take that additional adventure with you, now it's all about hunting, fishing, camping, exploring, and having a great time adventuring in the backcountry and having a reliable utility piece to be able to serve that need. Very cool. And talk to me a little bit about the motor options that you have, because you are unique in offering the potential for an unlimited thousand watt motor. Where is that applicable? Because it does, it does get tough in states that have the three class law that would be over the limit. So where would that be a useful amount of wattage? Absolutely. So we're based in Eagle, Colorado, right? We are a stereotypical Wild West town. And with e-bikes, it's the Wild West right now. The federal government has put the three class system out. So you have class one, two, and three. Those are gonna have a 750 watt power max. Class one and two have a 20 mile an hour speed limit. Class one, of course, is just pedal assist. Class two is where we play because we do feature this thumb throttle so that you can ride it just like a motorcycle. Class three puts it in that 28 mile an hour but removes the thumb throttle. We don't really play in that world because we're not designing bikes for the urban environment so much. So what we've done is we've got the classified versions available for those people that need to have that compliance. But perhaps you're using this on a trail that doesn't have those requirements. Perhaps you're riding on trails that is open to motorized vehicles, but you appreciate the quiet, the stealth, and everything that comes with the electric. Um, maybe you're hunting on private land and you don't have those compliance requirements. So that's where we have the option for the 1000 watt and even the 1500 watt monsters to be able to get the maximum power and utility out of the machine. Very cool. Thank you, Sphinx. Now we're out on the 
Quiet Cat Jeep, which is a full suspension, fat tire, electric mid-drive even, electric mountain bike. And I don't often add mountain bike to the end of that, because even many of these fat tire electric mountain bike style bikes, you know, they're marketed as a mountain bike, they're talked about as kind of like a go anywhere, do anything adventure bike. They don't really handle very well off-road, especially on like more rugged terrain. You can definitely do some light duty single track, light duty paths, roads, but this bike is actually built with some pretty legitimate mountain biking in mind. I mean, I know the guy who has put a lot of brain power into designing this bike as a pretty die-hard mountain biker. He actually races, even. So this thing's pretty, pretty legit. And that's pretty evident just by rolling on it. One, it's got pretty wide bars. Now, I don't know how wide these are, maybe 760, 780, maybe 800, but wide. What that does, it gives you a nice, stable, predictable steering profile. Gives you a little bit more of like that wide athletic stance on the bike, which is good on rough stuff. Another huge difference of this bike, it's kind of a standout, it's pretty unique to Quiet Cat bikes, is the inverted motocross style front fork. So, you know, a lot of the time, or most of the time, on suspended mountain bikes, the stanchion or the part that the fork slides on is at the top closest to the handlebars. And then the lowers below attach to the wheel and slide up and down in the stanchions. Well, this boat fork is reversed. It's also very burly. It's the first time I've actually seen it in person and it is bigger than I thought. Um, that's what she said. Uh, <laughs> but it shows, like this is a very heavy bike. It's very powerful. It's a 750 watt mid-drive motor from Fung. It's the Ultra pretty popular on this style of electric mountain bike but that fork really handles that power the weight of this bike very well it's also got some kind of more mountain bike style geometry i don't have a geometry chart in front of me obviously i'm riding but it very much feels a little slack it's got kind of a, a similar feel to kind of what's popular right now in modern mountain biking which is a longer lower slacked out wheelbase and makes the bike very predictable at higher speeds also predictable at lower speeds and this thing is just kind of nice and balanced i'm actually impressed by how balanced the bike feels this motor is capable of a lot of power it's actually got all metal internals whereas a lot of mid drives have like a nylon plastic internal that's why you probably hear a little bit of noise these things are fairly loud but they're not really caring about how much noise they make. But it's a very powerful motor. Feels like it's a pretty responsive torque sector. Like if I accelerate, it accelerates very quickly. If I stop pedaling, it stops powering very quickly. It's a really nice motor. So I'm in sport mode. There's actually two modes. Sport mode is the really quick one. It's gonna drain battery fast. And then if you hold, oops, it's holding the wrong button. If you hold the plus for just a few seconds, it pops into eco and vice versa. And eco is going to be a little bit slower, retain battery life. You know, this is the one where if you're on a longer ride or just don't need to expend a lot of energy. But this is a very large hill, so I'm gonna pop it back up to sport. So I'm in mode three, pedal assist setting three. Let's kick it up to five and see what this bike can do. So this is a class two e-bike. It's got a throttle and it's limited to 20 miles an hour. Pedal assistance is also limited to 20 miles an hour. Quiet is another one of those brands that's really gotten its start in hunting and has branched out kind of into the, uh, I wanna call it a four x four crowd, but they're building bikes that are designed to go really anywhere you want. It's not going to be the most stellar bike on single track. It's honestly just too powerful, um, at least for my taste. But 
if you put this on like say the 4x4 roads in Moab and actually Quiet Cat has some pretty fun videos of them riding some of the more famous slip rock 4x4 tracks on this bike it's very capable can these big fat tires are going to grip things going to be able to make it up stuff that is steeper than what your average bike will climb just a lot of power a lot of usable power so a little bit different than i think what maybe the typical e-mountain bike crowd is used to uh you know those motors are typically like 250 watt mid drives or less even depending on what brand you're looking at now that's small for a reason it's because you can very quickly overpower the terrain you're riding in depending on how tight it is how technical it is this bike's gonna do fine in that you know it's got a ton of different pas settings to pick from but just because of its weight sheer size and then just the force this motor puts out it's going to really shine on kind of some more wide open technical steep just probably pretty crappy terrain stuff that you wouldn't really want to take a normal bike up one thing of note though about these big powerful motors is i'm having to constantly remember to kind of back off my pedaling when i'm shifting uh this thing produces I could be citing a wrong number here, but I believe it's around 160 newton meters of torque, which is, for lack of a better word, just like an obscene amount of power. You can actually damage your drivetrain if you're not careful, especially in this higher assist settings like I'm in right now. You know, when we took these bikes out, they were really made a point of being like, don't overdo it on a start, make sure you shift, take it easy when you shift. So I'm trying to pay attention to when I shift to back off the pedals but luckily thanks thanks to the fact that it's an e-bike you don't have to shift all that often you can kind of just like crush up whatever you need it to but I've waxed poetic about this bike long enough let's flip it around and see how it handles some higher speed cornering we're gonna put these Tektro Dorado four piston brakes to the test. On a bike of this size and this power, four piston brakes are, and I'm just gonna come out and say it, mandatory. Uh, you know, they're gonna handle heat better. They're gonna have more stopping power. A bike like this deserves a brake like that. You know, e-bikes are far more than just going fast. You also need to be able to slow down. Um, so I'm gonna kind of open it up and see how this feels. Quite a bit harder in these corners 
it's very stable, um, remarkably so. That fork is uh, is a pretty cool feature on this bike. Quiet Cat's definitely a company uh, that's not really messing around with its off-road bikes. It's, it's pretty cool. Suspension is a pretty good litmus test. At least the quality of the suspension, how it handles at speed, how it handles bumps. Pretty good litmus test for the quality of the mountain bike that you're riding. At least from a design standpoint, they've done a great job. So if you've liked the Jeep e-bike, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel because we're going to do a couple more videos here with Quiet Cat and other e-bike brands at the, uh, the uh, great big gear show. Where are we? The big gear show. Man, this is third day. I'm getting real tired <laughs> here at the big gear show. So subscribe to our channel for more notifications when those videos come out. Also check out a link in our description below to a short write up that's going to give a little more details about this bike. Sphinx, thank you so much for Electric Bike Report. I'm Sam Gross. Thanks for watching.